This is our first lecture in uh, Machine Dynamics course. So today it will be uh, the first chapter is, is a kind of introduction to mechanisms. Uh, it's called linkages or mechanisms uh, uh, to define what is the mechanism and what are the components of a mechanism. By the end of this lecture, you will be able to recognize what are uh, links links uh, they are parts of a mechanism they are the main parts of the mechanism so you need to define or to know uh, which mechanical uh, element can be a link and which not also uh, you will be able to recognize what are kinematic pairs uh, kinematic pairs are the joints or connection in the mechanism. Also here, uh, you will be able at the end of this lecture to decide or to recognize uh, what is a uh, okay, what uh, thing in the mechanism can be uh, a joint. At the end, if uh, you will be able to recognize what are links and what are kinematic pairs. Uh, you will be able to recognize what are mechanisms, which are, is the main uh, topic of this uh, lecture. And uh, at the end, we will give some examples uh, of mechanisms uh, and uh, also some application. So some examples uh, of a mechanism uh, to, to have uh, a good uh, feeling about what is a mechanism and application this will motivate you about uh, this subject so we will uh, see at the end of this lecture uh, where or in which engineering application uh, mechanisms are used so uh, to achieve these uh, learning outcomes uh, the lecture is divided in several parts. So in uh, the first part, I'm going to give a definition of uh, a mechanism. What is a mechanism? And I w I'm going to insist in, in, in the useful definition of mechanism. I'm not going to go back to historical definitions or uh, to give multiple definitions. Uh, I will focus on one definition that is very useful that will help you to recognize what uh, and which a, which mechanical system can be considered as a mechanism and which not. To do and to achieve this, uh, I need to go uh, in detail about links, kinematic pairs and kinematic chains. Um, links are elements uh, of a mechanism. A kinematic pair are the connections between links. And links and kinematic pairs uh, build a kinematic change. So I'm going uh, to go in detail in these three uh, definitions. And this will help you <coughs> uh, to have uh, and to understand uh, the first definition of uh, mechanisms. Then, uh, of course, uh, I'm going to give some examples and uh, at the end, uh, I'm going to present some application of uh, mechanisms. So first, let's start with mechanisms. So what's a mechanism? No, a mechanism is uh, is built through uh, what is called here links. Links are any can be any uh, a link can be any mechanical uh, element. A mechanical element uh, can support forces, uh, can move. So uh, a link can be any mechanical element at the one condition that it can be assumed as a rigid body. The definition of a rigid body is uh, that the body does not change uh, shape. Its shape is conserved. When this body is subjected to some loads 
or some accelerations. So a link is mainly any rigid body, any body that can be assumed as rigid. So the main condition for to build a mechanism is to have parts that conserve their shape. To conserve their shape, the mathematical condition is that uh, any distance, any distance between two points of that body will not change when the body is subjected to forces or when the body is moving or subjected to uh, some accelerations. A link, so is a rigid body. Uh, a rigid body conserves shape, conserves distance, and also conserves angles. If we have, if we take any three points, these three points can make an angle between them, and this angle will be the same during uh, any motion that can do the link. So a mechanism is built of several links, several rigid bodies. We will see later that we need at least three, minimum three, but it, uh, there is no maximum number. But to build a mechanism, to make it simple in design, uh, we try always to have uh, as minimum as possible. A mechanism is built of links, which are rigid bodies, and uh, a minimum three links. Now, this links, if uh, int intrinsically they have each one uh, three degree of freedom, they can move independently. Uh, so, links only cannot make a, a mechanism. They are parts or the elements that build a mechanism, but they cannot make by themselves a mechanism. We need to connect the links together. To connect the links together, we need what we are going to call kinematic pairs or joints. The joints are connection of links, are the connection of links. How we connect links? It is through contact. So the links are connected together by putting them into contact. Now, depending on the joint or the type of joint or the type of kinematic pair, we can have a point contact, a line contact, or a surface contact. So all of them, this contact between any two links is the kinematic pair or is the joint. The joint is, uh, is used to assemble link together, to make that the links work together or move together, not in the same way, but they move dependently of each other. If we have one link move it or two or three, depending on how, how many inputs we need, the other links will automatically move. So to build a mechanism, I need some links, which are considered as rigid bodies, and I need to assemble them to put them together using joints or kinematic pairs, which is a kind of contacts, mechanical contacts. Now, if I have links and I connect them together, I built what's called kinematic chain. A kinematic chain is an assemblage of links using joints or kinematic pairs. Now, to, to build a mechanism, I need to add one condition on a kinematic chain. So a mechanism is a kinematic chain, but in which we have one link 
considered as the ground. One link considered as a reference. Now, if I say a link like here, link one is the ground, it doesn't, doesn't mean necessary that the link one is not moving or static. It just says that I am taking link one as a reference for my kinematic study. So if I consider link one as the ground, I'm considering link one as the, ref as the reference and to build a mechanism. I need to make a, a kinematic chain. A kinematic chain is just, I take links, rigid bodies, I connect them, I put them into contact, I connect them together using kinematic pairs. To have a mechanism, I need one more condition, is uh, one link to be considered uh, as the ground. It depends on your application, it depends how you will use the mechanism, you can change. It's not necessary to have always the same link as the ground. And I insist that the ground is not static. The ground is moving. But your study, when you study your mechanism, you study, for example, the motion of link two relatively to the ground, relatively to link one. We study the motion of link three relatively to link one, the ground. And also we study the motion of link four here relatively to link one, the ground, the reference all also sometimes is, is called this the frame so for the ground you can see the ground reference or the frame now what's a mechanism is for a mechanism is a kind of motion transformer it gets one input motion and uh, it gives another output motion so the input is is the motion you have in a link like here a link to, you will control link to by a, an external source of energy, manually using a motor or any other source. And with this external source, you will assign to link to a certain motion. Like for example, a crank motion, a rotational motion. And you want to transform this motion to, for example, a translation motion. So you built your mechanism in such a way that link 4 has a translation motion. So this is how a mechanism transforms a certain input motion, in our example, a rotation motion, to another type of motion, for example, here link 4, an example also, a translation motion. So what you will do with with a mechanism that depending, we will see later uh, in the second lecture, mobility, you will need one or more inputs. It can be more inputs than one. It's not necessarily just one input. Uh, so you will control uh, one or more links. You will give to these links a certain desired motion using some external source of energy and you build your mechanism, you choose the component of your mechanism, how you connect them together, in uh, such as there is a link will give you the, the desired motion or the output motion. So let's have a simple and a first example. We'll go back to more examples later. Now, the first and uh, uh, the simplest example and even the most common mechanism uh, also because it, it's it's common because it's simplicity it's uh, the four bar mechanism so let's say here we have four rigid bar bars the bars as they are rigid so here the shape is just uh, simple so Basically here, as the bars are rigid, the length of bars not change when the mechanism will move or if the mechanism is subjected to some, some loads. So there will be no change of length uh, for bars. So 
I need to build a mechanism links here I have chosen for this first example four bars I will take four bars with different links now if there is no kinematic pair no joint they're not assembled so each link will work independently of the others so first to build a kinematic chain I need to use joints so here there's also the simplest a joint is the pin joint or the revolute joint the pin joint will uh, block the translation between the links and allow only the rotation so here for example between link one and two the pin joint one two will block all translations of two regarding one but it will allow that link to the red one will rotate relatively to link one again the pin joint to three will connect link two and three they will not have a complete independent motion now as they cannot translate relatively to each other i cannot i cannot for example take three and make it translate horizontally I cannot, cannot uh, take link three and make it translate vertically with respect to link two. I can only make link three rotate uh, with respect to link two. So this is how pin joints work. So here I have taken four links, four rigid bars, and I have assembled them. I have connected them together using four pin joints so I have used four links and four kinematic pairs now with this I built a kinematic chain now to build a mechanism I need to choose one as the ground so I will just fix for my kinematic study this link also I insist this link is not necessarily static I just for my kinematic study I will assume that this link one is not moving so I'm taking link one here as the ground or as the reference for my kinematics as link one is not moving yes the two pin points one two and one four will not also move but they allow that link 2 and link 4 to rotate uh, relatively to link 1. Okay, and the last example, okay, uh, the last point is that, okay, I need an input motion. Uh, and uh, this input motion, it will be transformed to another output motion. For example, here. Let's assume I have a motor and the link to or the, the link colored in red. So this motor will rotate or control the rotation of uh, link to the red link. It will control the speed, the acceleration and so on. Now it can be actually it can be any link input. But just to take an example here for my study for my simulation here I have imposed what means controlling I, I am uh, imposing to this red link to have a certain uh, velocity and to have a certain acceleration to control the motion of one link is to give it uh, a certain position a certain velocity and a certain acceleration for any time okay and changing the ground uh, we, we will define it later it it, it, it it is called inversion inverting a mechanism is to choose a different link as the ground let's focus only on this example now see how uh, the 
red link is moving and how the cyan or light blue one is moving now the blue one is making a full rotation whereas the cyan link okay this one is just going back and forth it cannot complete a full 360 degree rotation he will go up to this position i think and then he will go back this link cannot make the the range of rotation of this one is limited and this is a kind of transformation when you can complete a full rotation it's a crank so here i'm transforming the input crank motion to uh, in this link it is a rocker a rocker when a link is rotating but within only a limited range it goes only back and forth it cannot complete a 360 uh, so this is only one example of a, uh, of transformation of motion after that we can have different mechanisms uh, we can have different inputs and get different outputs okay now this is a fast definition about mechanisms now to to understand the mechanism i need to go uh, in more details about links in more details about kinematic pairs okay if you understand links and kinematic pairs you will understand automatically what is a kinematic chain because a kinematic chain is just an assemblage of links and kinematic pairs in this second part now to to uh, uh, go in more details on links and on kinematic pairs so links links are as I have said, I insist on this point, are the basic elements of a mechanism. They are mechanical parts. So any mechanical part, any mechanical element, any mechanical uh, body that can support forces, that can move, and for which I can assume that it is a rigid body, a rigid body, I insist, basic definition that i have i take any two points not only two it should work for any two points if i take any two other points it should also work so for these two points if i follow the motion of the the body this distance should be the same for any time and at that time i can consider the body is the region a link can be any shape it does not necessarily a bar or, or a desk or anything it can be really in any shape now a rigid body has mainly three elementary motion three basic motions now i am talking i'm insisting and this will be the case in 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 most of uh what the materials you are dealing with in this course that we will focus on planar motion the motion in plane in two two dimensional motion so in planar motion a link can translate or rotate or combine the two so there is three elementary motion the horizontal translation the vertical translation and of course the rotation the rotation which is about the axis that going out of plane now any other motion of uh, the link is a combination of this it can be a combination of two translation it can be a combination of one translation and one rotation or it can be also a combination of all the three elementary motion it is a combination of the two translation and the rotation now why this elementary motion because this 
elementary motion, the two translation and the rotation that are the only transformation that conserves shape, that, that conserves the distance, that conserves the uh, angles. So translations and rotations are the only transformation that makes the body or uh, that allow the body to be rigid. So a link is a rigid body that can translate in two ways, in two directions, and it can rotate. There is only one rotation possible in planar motion. Now, if you go into space motion, just to give an example, but we will not focus on that, a body can make, can have six elementary motion, three translation in the three axes, and three rotation, a rotation about also the three axes. Now, in reality, anybody can suffer some distortion. Anybody, any link can suffer some change of shape or some change of distance between points. However, because in reality, there, there, there will be always this kind of, of uh, distortion. Now, however, when, when we design, for example, links for a mechanism, we will design them in a way to, in such a way that this distortion is insignificant and cannot affect its kinematics. So there is some distortion alone, but if this distortion is not altering, it's not affecting the motion or the kinematics of the body or of the mechanism, we can neglect it. And if it can be neglected, it means there is okay. We can assume it. There is no distortion, and the body can be assumed as a rigid body and considered as a link. Now here gears. There should be always some distortion in the contact points in, in the teeth. In the teeth. Now, when we design gears, we design them in such a way that this distortion within a certain range and within a certain acceptable range. And these distortions are insignificant and can be neglected. Also, for example, in a cam and for lower mechanism, especially in the contact between the cam and the follower, there should be some distortion. But this distortion can be neglected. And the cam and the follower should be designed in a way that this distortion within a certain range that can be neglected. Now, a link is not built in one piece or in one part. No, sometimes we draw the link in one part, but behind this schematic, it's not necessarily uh, manufactured in one part. So mainly, links can be built through multiple parts but for the mechanism, these parts are tightly linked, tightly assembled by well, for example, or in other tool. So if they are tightly assembled, the parts cannot move relatively to each other. So the whole assemblage can be considered as, as a rigid body. Sometimes, they are not tightly assembled, but the assemblage makes that they cannot move relatively to each other. In that case also, in that case, we can assume the link as a rigid body. I'm going to give some examples. Now, for example, if I take three bars and the bars, I, I am going to connect them through pin joints. So 
I'm not tightly assembling them. I'm allowing some relative degree of freedom because I'm supposed to have some possible rotation between the links. Now, we'll see in the second lecture that these three cannot move uh, relatively to each other. If I assemble three links, three bars use, using three pin joints, they will not have any relative motion. So if there is no relative motion, it means any points here, any two points, their distance will be the same. Any angles will be the same, will be conserved. The shape will be conserved. So here I have, I'm starting from three parts, but I am building with the three parts a one rigid body because I have no relative motion. So these three bars, they are originally three parts, but they are, I can consider them as one link. Why? Because I don't have any relative motion. Now, for example, a real example, if you have a camshaft or crankshaft in a uh, car engine, uh, you have here the flywheel and different parts. These parts are manufactured, manufactured separately, but they are assembled in such a way they will not allow any relative motion. So I will not consider each part as a link. As all they will move all together, I will consider this as one rigid body, so as one link. Now, the other thing is, okay, a link can have any shape. Now, when I'm talking from the beginning about bars, they're not necessarily rods or bars exactly with this shape. Behind that, there is some real shape. But this real shape of the link or, or the rigid body, it does not affect the motion. So, when I'm going to draw uh, kinematic diagrams later, I will not consider the real shape. I don't care about the real shape. Uh, rarely I will uh, I will do it if this real shape will affect if this real shape will affect uh, the motion. But what is important is what are the connections, the joints, and how they are distributed or positioned relatively to each other. So. Now, for a four bar mechanism, I have four bars connected with pin joints, but the pin joints, okay, what I am interested in is how these pin joints are positioned relatively to each other. Now, what, what I'm drawing here is just the link between these pin joints. I don't care exactly what is the real shape. Behind these bars, it can be any shape. So, the shape you will design it by considering uh, or by having other considerations, depending on your application. Now, for the kinematic of, of the mechanism itself, I don't care if, for example, this link is a rod or a disk. Uh, I don't care if this is a bar or has any other uh, other shape. If the ground is, is just one straight line or has a, a different shape. Now, what is important for me is to only have the connections between the pinch points. So, what you will see later, the are kinematic diagrams. They will not reflect the, the real shape of the mechanism, but they will focus on the important things that will affect the kinematics. Okay? So here it's, okay, this is the real shape of the mechanism. Let's, let's take it as example. 
But what I will study for the kinematics is this four bar mechanism. Okay. Now let's have a few examples of links. Now you will have okay the bars, the binary links. So this okay I'm representing this as a bar, but okay, as I have just said, it's very behind this there is a real shape of the body, and the real shape will be defined having other consideration. But for my kinematics, I will draw it only as a bar. The bar or binary link is a link that has uh, two connections and mainly with two pin joints so it is connected to other links mainly sometimes it's connected with more but at least it is connected with only two pin joints so a binary link is a link or a rigid body that is connected to at least two other links using two pin joints now i can go uh, with more and more uh, pin joints so if i have one link but it is connected to at least three links with with uh, three pin joints now i have ternary link and i will draw it as as a rectangle okay so it is here the tri tri uh, no not rectangle a triangle so here the triangle is just a representation a kinematic representation of the link of course if i go uh, in high order i will have a quaternary link uh, which is a link with uh, four pin joints and uh, will be connected to at least to at least four uh, other links now we have a slider the slider is uh, represented as mainly not always but in in most of cases it is represented as a rectangle <coughs> sorry so it is represented as a rectangle and it slides it it is translating relatively to other one okay this is the slider the link we have gears so gears uh, sometimes we represent them uh, by their real shape but mostly we represent them as circles or discs uh, this okay uh, okay gears uh, can be any teethed rigid body okay if it is a square gear we represent it as a circle if not okay uh, it will be a different uh, representation now uh, mostly we don't represent uh, the teeth in our kinematic diagram just uh, we represent the contact lines uh, between uh, gears also we have cams so cams it, it is a, any any mechanical device that uh, transmit motion through direct contact uh, okay so uh, it, it is just a contact point let's go to kinematic pairs or joints a kinematic pair or joint is the contact now the body itself is the link the contact between bodies in a mechanism is the kinematic pair a kinematic pair is the contact between two links and the contact depends on the nature of joint it can be a point it can be a line or it can be a surface now uh, why we are putting uh, links uh, into contact it is to to limit their relative degree of freedom we put them into contact in order to reduce the degree of freedom between two links now here just for example if I have any two links two bars the simplest one now if they are not connected if I take the right bar here this one 
it can have the three motions, the two translation, and the, the, the one, the rotation. This one also have the three motion. So each bar here can move independently of the other one. If I move one, I will not transfer the motion to the other one. So, in order to have this connection, I need to block some degree of freedom. So, here, for example, a pin joint will cancel the two translation. So, now the two bars cannot uh, translate relatively to each other. And will allow some of them. Uh, here, I, I have allowed the pin joint degree of freedom, which is the rotation. So if I pull on the right bar here to the to the right horizontally, the other one will follow. Why? Because there is no relative translation allowed. However, if I will rotate the right bar, okay, there is no motion transferred here. Why? Because the rotation is allowed. It is completely free for the right link, the right bar to rotate about the left one. But it is not possible for the left link to move horizontally or vertically in a translation independently of the second one. So a kinematic pair is used to reduce the relative degree of freedom. Now, this, by reducing the relative degree of freedom, what we are going to do, it is to assemble, to connect the links together. Now, on the bottom here, I have four bars. They're completely disassembled, disconnected. So, any link can move independent of the other one. On the top, I have the same four bars, they are assembled together. How I have assembled them? By using pin joints and more precisely by reducing the relative degree of freedom. So a joint is a tool to reduce relative degree of freedom between links. Now, if I use any mean to, re to cancel the all three degree of freedom, now it's not a joint. Why? Because, okay, the two links will become just one rigid body. So a link should at least keep one degree of freedom allowed. Now, by doing this, when you take links and you assemble them together or you connect them together using uh, can, uh, using a kinematic pair or a joint. Of course, you build a kinematic chain. And this is a first step to make a mechanism. After that, a mechanism, you choose any one link depending on your application to make it as a ground and you have a mechanism. Now, to have some example of kinematic pairs, again, uh, I am focusing on <clears throat> planar motion. We are considering only two-dimensional motion, two-dimensional kinematics. So you have as a first example, this is the simplest example, the pin joint, which allow uh, only the rotation. Now, the, now, if you allow the rotation, it means the rotation of one is completely independent, free of the other one. So the two links can rotate in the same direction or not. They can have the same velocity or not. One can move, the other one can rotate. So the two rotations are completely independent of each other. This is a, comp a, a, a degree of freedom. Now, the translation are blocked, so no link can move relatively or translate relatively to the other one. The other example is the prismatic joint here on the top right part here. Now here, 
it is a slider which is moving translating relatively to the other one now here what we have blocked is the vertical translation and also the box here or the slider cannot cannot rotate relatively to the blue bar so in prismatic joint also we allow only one degree of freedom which is one translation we block or we cancel two degree two degrees of freedom one the perpendicular translation and the rotation now we have also a cam joint a cam joint is a simple contact here okay between the joints so the motion is transferred just by simple contact now if you see here the this one the cam can rotate relatively to the other one but also the there is a possible translation in this direction now this motion the vertical motion the vertical translation is not possible the the follower cannot go inside the cam or the cam cannot go inside uh, the, the follower so here there is only one degree of freedom which is blocked and this cam joint allow two degree of uh, motion and the last example for our planar motion is the gear joint so the motion is transferred through uh, teeth now here again it's like the cam joint uh, the one gear cannot go inside the other one but they can rotate relatively to each other and here the teeth you see they are translating relatively to each other so there is two degree of freedom allowed one rotation and one translation but uh, only one translation here is blocked so they these are the main kinematic pairs or the main joints that we are going to use in planar motion okay so uh, kinematic pairs are classified in in different ways okay there is a lot of classification here i will focus only on on two classifications so they are classified first in terms of lower or higher pairs a lower pair so a joint or a kinematic pair is a contact okay it's a contact between between links a lower pair is when the the contact between links is uh, is a surface so lower pairs have surface contacts and this is the case of pin joints or prismatic joints uh, pin joints is the contact is a cylindrical you have a pin in in a cylinder and the, the contact is a, uh, is, is a, an entire surface okay so this is considered as lower pair uh, now higher pairs can have either a point or a line contact now in a cam and joints a cam uh, and gear joints you have a line the contact if we see the contact between the cam and the follower or if we see the contact between the teeth in gears it is a line so they are higher pairs we don't have an example of one point okay in some cams no uh, in 2d uh, it, it's special so it is a uh, line contact now the the kinematic pairs also can be classified in terms of their degree of freedom they can have either one degree of freedom they can allow either one degree of freedom or two. so here the lower pairs and one degree of freedom pairs they they match because pin joints allow one rotation prismatic joints allow only one uh, translation so here all the one degree of freedom pairs are lower pairs and this is only special for planar motion okay in space motion it's not true lower pairs are different from okay the classification of lower and higher is different uh, from the classification depending on the degree of freedom now here again if we focus on the the, the joints or pairs that have uh, 
two degree of freedom, again, we will find the, the higher pairs, the cam and gears. So here we can a little bit in planar motion confuse lower and one degree of freedom pairs and higher pairs and the two degree of freedom pairs. Okay, and this is only possible for planar motion. It's not true for three-dimensional motion. Now, also uh, an important thing is the order of joint or the kinematic pair. Now, this is depending on how many links are connected using that joint. It's a, it's a very simple concept. Now, if I have a, a joint that connects two links, okay, uh, here, okay, there is a little problem here, okay. If I have a joint that connects uh, two links, I will say that the order is one. Now, if it connects three, the order is two. And, of course, if it connects P plus one links, the order is, is P. So, always the order of a joint is the number of links that is connecting minus one. So, if I have, for example, a joint that connects five links together, the joint is of order four. If it is connecting ten, joint, ten links together, it is of order nine. Always number of links minus one. They are all, I'm insisting here, the all links, they are connected with only the same and one joint or kinematic pair. Okay. Okay. Now, I think you have, a, okay, a good uh, idea about mechanisms and uh, how they are built, built, built from links using kinematic pairs. What are the example of links? You have an idea of uh, what can be a kinematic pair. And of course, okay, uh, slum, assembling links together with uh, with kinematic pairs will uh, make a kinematic chain. Now, uh, I'm going to make, uh, to give some example of mechanisms. No, before that, just a, a brief recall, or not, not recall, it's a brief overview about kinematic diagrams. So kinematic diagrams are a sch schematic of a diagram uh, which is very simple and focus on what is important for the kinematics. And mainly, the kinematic diagram does not pay attention on the real shape. This is what I have said before about links, about bars. The bars does not represent the real shape of, uh, of a link. Now, uh, and it will focus more on the relative position. So, here some example of uh, what we are going to use to represent links. Uh, for example, here a circle will represent a pin joint, but the pin joint will can move. Now, if it is grounded, uh, it will look like this one. The binary, ternary, and quaternary links are already uh, introduced. We have the prismatic joints like this, so we have a slider. Uh, which is moving, for example, along uh, a bar that can move. Now, uh, this is if the slider is translating with respect to the ground. Uh, a gear joint is especially spur gears are represented as circles. So, this is simplification of the real shape of, of links. Now, the first example is the four bar mechanism. I have already introduced it. So it's it's simply uh, three uh, moving links which uh, rotate relatively to each other. Now here the motion of one it's not necessarily one uh, crank and the other rockers. It can be crank, 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 rocker, rocker, rocker. Uh, so uh, just some uh, okay nomenclature. The input so one 
if one the input, the other one is the output. The link between them is the coupler, uh, and the other one is, is the ground. Another example is the slider crank. The slider crank mechanism, uh, we have uh, the ground, we have two bars, so one will rotate relatively to, uh, to the ground, and here we are just, it's, it's a kind of four bar mechanism, but we change it uh, one uh, binary link or one bar by, by a slider. So we have just one link that translating respectively to the ground. Uh, we have another example, the Scotch shock. So here the Scotch shock, we change it starting from the four bar mechanism, we change it two bars by two sliders. So here what is in, in blue, which is in blue here, like a T-shaped blue, it's a, it's a kind of slider. That's why I've said mostly sliders, we, we draw them as, as rectangles, but sometimes we need uh, to, uh, to draw them differently. So here, what we have, uh, the magenta link here, uh, the pink link, which is rotating about the ground, uh, we have the red uh, box here translating respectively to the T-shaped body, which is uh, uh, translating horizontally. Now, here also the scotch yoke mechanism is transforming uh, a crank motion to a reciprocal uh, translating motion. Now, all these links use, uh, or these mechanisms use uh, four links. Now let's have uh, an example of a mechanism with more links. So here it is uh, a Watts six bar mechanism. Uh, it's using four bars and or four binary links uh, and two ternary links. Now if you focus here on one part, it's a kind of a four bar mechanism here. And if I focus on the second part, it's a kind uh, for uh, bar mechanism here. So this six bar mechanism is just a combination of a two of two bar, two four bar mechanisms. Okay. Uh, now uh, also gear train is also a, are a good example of uh, uh, mechanisms. So here we have uh, an ordinary gear train uh, which involves three gears. Now, but the mechanism will involve four links because we need uh, one more link as the ground. So this mechanism will be built uh, from four uh, uh, links, uh, ground, and uh, three gears. So let's move uh, now to give some application of the mechanisms. How uh, mechanisms are uh, useful in real engineering application. Actually, mechanisms are everywhere. Mechanisms are in every machine or uh, in every machine that have, that is moving or has some parts moving. So uh, you can imagine a lot, lot of uh, applications. Here I'm going to give only few ones. So for example, in a bike, we need to transform the, 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 the feet motion to a revolute uh, motion of the wheel. So uh, we have here a mechanism that is made by uh, the crank here that uh, it is driven by the feet uh, of the rider. Uh, we have two sets of gears in front and here and which are connected uh, with um, with with a chain. This is the crank set uh, gear, and this is the cassette uh, gear. Now, this is just uh, one example. Uh, the braking system also can be considered as a uh, as a mechanism, and so on. Now, uh, this is. Uh, I will say a, a car that is, that is a full of mechanisms uh, and just I'm taking here only two. 
So, for example, uh, the transmission uh, system uh, is a gear train. So here, if it is manual transmission system, uh, that is, it is a reverted compound gear train, and uh, it. Uh, Yes, it's a reverted compound gear train, and uh, this is uh, one mechanism. So uh, it transmits uh, the energy and the motion from the engine uh, to the wheels. Uh, sometimes it's speed reduction, uh, use it for speed reduction or increased torque. Now, another application here, the, the gas engine, the gas engine, uh, needs uh, the slider crank mechanism here to transform uh, the reciprocal translating motion of the sl of the piston due to the gas explosion into a rotation motion. Okay, so there is a, a gas explosion which induces the piston into translation. And we need to transform that into rotation, and this is done by. Here we have four slider crank mechanisms that work in parallel. Okay. Also, uh, there is a very wide application uh, of mechanisms in robotics. Uh, fitness equipment, construction equipment. Uh, really, it, it, there is a lot, a lot of application and uh, mechanisms are in every uh, moving parts of machines. Okay. So, well, this, uh, I'm coming to the end of this uh, first part that have introduced mechanisms and uh, mainly we have defined what is a mechanism and we have gave uh, some example of mechanisms and we have gave also some applications.